Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome Come to Couch, Couch Pilots, Pilots, the show so that, that dares, dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots, pilots of the past. past. My, My name, name is Jason. You can also call me the Black Mandingo. What's a Mandingo? It's a, a slave that wrestled till death. <laughs> wow. I believe. That's hardcore. <laughs> call me that. <laughs> Mandingo? Thank you, you black, Captain Philip Ressisher. fucking black mandingo, you. <laughs> yep, that's my nickname. Don't wear it out. Captain Philip Ressisher, Hello. You, you said the whole intro with me. What's that all about? Uh, well, I just... I, so a lot of times I feel like your intro is so suave and so cool and yeah. so organized and like it catches people's attention. Yeah. And then you turn it over to me and I just go, Hi, how you doing? I, I need something. I need. I need like a little slogan or something, like a saying or like a catchphrase. Oh, well, let's work on that right now. Okay. What, what do you? Uh, what do you think that should? What, okay. This is how I see it. Okay. We got the intro of the FCF network. Kind of a carnival of evil, almost. Yeah. <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason, sound. Yeah. And then it goes into uh, the wings, the the classic, cool, smooth, classical music piano of, of the classic '90s show, Wings. wings. And then I, I don't I don't want to come in jarring. No, no, no. So I come in nice. Ah, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Welcome, all my oh, friends. Yeah. <laughs> so I can understand. It. Let's start off the show with some high impact, but I'm not going to do that. No, I, no, no. I'm going to smooth it in, ease everybody into the show. But if you want. You're like a smooth operator. I've, uh, you know, call me the black operator. Okay. <laughs> and across from me is someone who was going to inject some some vim and also vigor into the show. Okay. Our vim and vigor. Yeah. What what's that going to be? Something with a with a little bit of power, a little little get you. What is that going to be? Hey boy. Hey. How you doing? Okay. All right. All right. Like that. I re- <laughs> I really like Let's it. Let's just rewind a little right when you introduce yourself and then we'll, we'll I'll try I'll try it. My name is Jason. You can also call me the Black Mandingo, and across from me is Captain Philip Rest. Sure, Captain, how you doing? Hey, boy, yeah. how you doing? Yeah, that's it. Okay, it's so weird that we're like, let, just right now, we're deciding let's get a catchphrase, let's work on it right now, and, and the first one we do. <laughs> that's the way we are, though. We've been doing this together so long that I mean, it's almost like we can finish each other's sentences. sandwiches. Damn it, God. God. God damn it. That's the one that always gets me. Like sandwiches. Isn't that the saying? Isn't that the saying? No. Finish each other's sandwiches. sandwiches. Isn't that the saying? Yes. Let's try it again. I find myself, we always finish each other's sandwiches. sandwiches. Fucking. Okay. Um, let's rewind it one more time. <laughs> this is Jason. You can also call me the black man. Dingo, across from me is Captain Philip Resister. Captain, how you doing? Hey, boy. How you doing? I'm good now. I like to ease it in, but you really pump in some vim and vinegar at the beginning of the show. Thank you so much for doing so. <laughs> it's all good. And welcome to all of our friends, all of our all of our friends. From across the land. <laughs> You're really ripping off my cadence. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have such a, a hackney cadence. No, I love uh, it. Okay, it's well, smooth. thank you. It's, it's smooth. I, I can see why you get a lot of puntain to the left and puntain to yeah. the right. I just don't know what to do with it all. <laughs> my hands are filling up with it. Cut. <laughs> Plates of <laughs> plates of poontane all over the place. Your hand was limp. I thought you were gonna be like, I'm working. I'm working this poontane so hard. It's, I've got carpal tunnel. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Maybe that's not what was happening. No. I was just like, hello, like poontane everywhere. They said they say whatever they want about this man across from me, Captain Philip Rusher. But goddamn, if you don't have pageantry, the way that you present things. The, the waving of the arms, the welcoming of people from all across the land, all of our frequent flyers, you're a top-notch, a top-notch podcast personality. That's why Thank I love you. you. That's why the legions of fans love you. Oh. Let, okay. And let's define legions as uh, a Th- ten. Two or more. Two or more. Um, like a murder. A murder of fans. A murder, yeah. And you know what? Lord willing, they will murder one of us. Right. 
Um, getting super excited about the FCF Network one year anniversary marathon. Yeah, uh, that's coming up. Hopefully, uh, I, I believe it's November fourteenth, nineteen. I don't know. 19? I don't know. That's Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll probably be there. Okay. I mean, at least in spirit. Oh, uh, it's a, it's on uh, a Saturday, I assume. Yes. The last one was a success. Oh, if you ask su- me. such a success! It was. We 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 bonded. We all had a good time. I want to say I arrived at your house about noon, maybe twelve thirty, and I didn't leave for maybe fourteen, fifteen hours. Nice, nice, unbelievable day of podcasting. What a delicious amount of content that was churned that day. So excited! I cannot wait for the next marathon. We're really narrowing in here, but let's focus on what we're doing okay, here today. I'm sorry, I, I'll lose focus sometimes. No, that's fine. We should let people know about the marathon. Sure. Absolutely. And, and it covers all the shows of the network. We'll be recording versions of all the different shows. A lot of multiple cross, versions. Yeah, a lot of cross pollination with personalities from the different shows, bringing in new people. Um, something that people at home can't uh, enjoy. All the booze and food. Right. Um, but uh, I think they might be able to enjoy it indirectly because one of the ideas I have is to have a confessional room where after each episode, um, whatever whatever podcast is being recorded, at the end of that episode. Uh, someone that was not on the show who listened to it, or, you know, watched it, it live, it, watched it live, mm-hmm. will take each one of the participants into a room and videotape and just ask them a couple, three or four questions. Confession. Confessions. I think it'd be. Cool. I think that'd be neat. That, that's interesting. We haven't done anything like no. that before. That'd be interesting. Sure, I, I'd listen and to it. The later the night goes, I'm sure the more animated those will go. <laughs> I'm excited for the marathon. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it yields. I'm excited for another year of FCF Network. Yeah, for, so, so so far so good. We're hanging in there, hanging in and hanging on. Uh, I want to say, as we often we we talk about uh, Down syndrome, John DSJ, our, our tarmac worker who has the golden cones and directs the airplane. Right. You know, coming in and taking good off. Good guy. Great guy. Um, I don't know if you saw this today. Ooh. Oh, well, did you see it? No. No. Okay. I was going to let you run with it, but you haven't seen it. No. Okay. <laughs> he um, he was out in the front of the uh, the terminal. Someone's car had broken down, and he, I think they, they I think it was a tire. They blew a tire, oh, okay. and he was helping them change the tire. Nice. Did you know that he had any kind of uh, background in in mechanics? Not at all. I thought it was just waving the cones and no. And I know he lifts things. And that, honestly, that is mainly where he came into play here. Oh, okay. The uh, there was no jack to be found. So a lot, he, of, a lot of older cars, they don't people don't when they when they buy the car, they don't check to make sure there's a jack and a spare in there. Right. I, I have kind of a from a jack. jack to a spare. This show is built on the back of his songs. That's oh, all. That's all. Oh, that it? Okay. Just had the chorus. Okay. But that, that's what he was doing because it was an older make. I think it was like an '88 Oldsmobile, and he had he he had lifted vehicle up Jesus. the just the pure power that, that could only be described testicular as power. fortitude yeah he, he may have ripped a, a, a nut honestly Ooh, we should probably have him checked out the uh i know mean, we talked on the last episode about the dials on the cones being set to the seasons sure. i think there's actually one that just can go direct flashlight so we could point it at his nethers to see if there was some tearing down there okay I, I don't, I'm not personally going to do it. Maybe that's something No, I mean, would... I'm a pilot and a sky cop. That's kind of that's where I draw the line. I'm not really a surgeon or um, a physical education teacher. That's fine. I mean, anyone can say turn your head and cough, you know? Sure. Just get, get a couple of rubber gloves on, whatever. But he was, uh, he's such a good guy. He's always willing to help. Uh, he, he really made that woman's day. Oh. She, she had a crying baby in the back of, oh. of her mini, or the Shut Oldsmobile. Shut that crying baby up. Yeah. And I think he had said that once too. I think sure. he gets sometimes he gets frustrated. I think he did say shut shut that baby up. But I mean, <laughs> what, are you going to get mad at the guy helping you? Right, with your exactly. Car? Especially yeah. a man with such power too. Oh, sheer power. I wouldn't want that guy coming at me with all that strength. I, w- I wonder why he didn't play football. Hmm. Do you think it was just the, the schemes, the defensive schemes, and were too complex? Maybe. Maybe. I, I sometimes I hear about even in the NFL, like even like back in the day. How dumb the guys are on the line! Right. Just, just genuinely how stupid they are, right. and they don't know necessarily the plays. Uh, like, They're just out there. Throwing medical. It. That really is about yeah, it. But I don't think so now. It's very scientific nowadays. I would. I think you're right. I think in the modern era of football, it has become much more intricate. Could he? Could he not follow the plays? I don't know. What, do you think he would be best on the line? Oh yes, he would be a, a defensive lineman, definitely. Okay, in the trenches, so to speak. Yeah, because of his sheer power. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, we, I don't think we've ever really talked about how tall he is. 
Five eleven? No. You don't no, think he's so? he's a short, stocky fella, right? Five five eleven is kind of short, right? I'm five ten. Oh, am I short? Well, <laughs> how tall are you? Six foot one. No, no, you're not. No. First thing in the morning. Okay, I'll give you that. Well, you're always tallest the first thing when you first got that's out of bed right because the gravity pushes on you on all night. Everything kind of separates and, right. and yeah, yeah, just like when you pet a hamster to the point where it flattens out. <laughs> Remember Heather? She just said she just kept watching that video of that. Oh, Lord. I love her. I love her. She's fantastic. Um, yes, and I think that's the same way. I think if you pet down uh, DSJ, if you really like put sure. DSJ in the palm of your hands and really pet him down, he probably could get to five eleven. But he he's so short and stocky that I'd put him on the line for sure. I think it, he just looks 5'11 when he has the cones, when he's waving them. I mean, it makes him look taller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and especially if, yeah, you're absolutely right. Anyway, uh, football season in full swing. I'd love to be able to say that I see DSJ out there, but no, he, he's, more of a, he's more of a superhero, wouldn't you say? Oh, I would say that some people would see him as a superhero. All those gold medals and yeah. helping people and washing trays. Yeah, That's... and that kind of goes in line with what we're doing here today. Oh, okay. The show that we're talking about oh, today. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, why don't we get into that? Let's board the airplane. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Yeah, we're boarding the plane. Put your seatbelts on. We're going uh, for a ride. I, I got my new seatbelt, the special order of my eBay. Mm-hmm. Look at it. Zzz. Wow, I, I like that noise. Um, Zzz. Yeah, here, here, here's the noise mine makes. Well, didn't you see the pattern on it? I like no, I like that. Can you forward me like a classically blue link to where? Oh, I definitely, can buy one? definitely. But don't get the same one because then I won't know where to sit. Down. <sighs> Boy, this comes modern in, problems. This comes in orange as well. Orange is the new cone. Orange is the new seatbelt. Right. <laughs> so what? What is Couch Pilots besides talking about a man with Down syndrome being a football player? I'll tell you what it is. It's about two airline pilots flying through the air. Discussing television pilots, so it's a play on a word pilot. Oh, essentially, word plays our favorite. It is the best. We love it. Yeah, there's so many TV shows out there. There's so many you can't even name, and those are the ones that are on TV. Right. That's well, not the, it doesn't even include the ones that didn't make it. For every one out there, there's a, there's another ten or twenty that didn't make it on the air. So we search them out. We say, hey, where are these television shows that had only one episode? And then once we find them, we watch them, and then we record ourselves talking about it to help. The needy. The needy. You yeah. know, each podcast we do, um, every thousand downloads, mm-hmm. we donate a pilot to a le- less privileged person. That's right. Family. I mean. That's absolutely right. So at this point, we've how many people have Three. we helped? Three. Yeah. So God bless those people, everyone. And God bless us for the work that we do week to week, every oh. Monday on the FCF Network. We do so much work. It, 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 to be honest with you... I mean, Let's most, be most people would say, hey, I'm doing a lot of work here. When am I going to make some money? Sure. Um, we never we never even bring that up. No. You know, we never tell people that there is a donate button. No, we don't ever talk about that. Right. You know, it takes money to make money. Mm-hmm. And right now? It's not about the money. It's not about it's the not money. About the money. It's about love. It's about passion. It's about people and it's relationships. Like hug, it's about hugging each one of these people. When when everybody comes aboard, yeah. When you when you subscribe to um, Couch Pilots on your, you know, you'll you'll get that hug that 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 the C, digital embrace, the CP digital mm-hmm. embrace, and that's, and, right. and that's what it's all about. Yeah, making people feel warm, even if it's just putting the head uh, the earphones on the earbuds, headphones, getting us into your head, wrapping our voices around your soul. That comfort, soothe, sit back, hey, don't, and don't, let call, us don't, us. don't call the cops, this don't is, and don't call to come back either. I've okay? been here for years. Yeah. Almost ten now, right? Almost ten. You've been Almost podcasting. 10. You're you're a true original. Uh, you're an American original. Stop, stop, stop. Nah. So today we discussed the pilot episode of Super Clyde from the year of our Lord, two thousand and thirteen. Great year. That's right all upon us. It's it's almost that it's right like now. Three years ago, we're really narrowing in. You know, on present if you day. think about it, when we first started, we were talking about stuff from the seventies. Right, we were talking about stuff that was on before we were born. Nineteen seventies. Right. Yeah. Uh, this was after Mick Jagger and the Stones played that free concert in San Francisco. A lot of the stuff we do on the show really centers around 
that fateful day, the Stones played the show with the Hells Angels as the as the bodyguards. bodyguards, and somebody was stabbed. We know. have we have a machine here called the Pachinko machine. Everything Couch Pilots related goes through it. It's uh, made up of gears. There's nothing electrical about it. All the information goes in there. It adds up frequent flyer points, but it also takes into consideration when that concert was in relation to everything that exactly, we do. Exactly, and so I mean, think about it. Like like before, we could turn around mm-hmm. and we couldn't even see the pilots. Right. You know, now. Turn around. Those pods that we're reviewing, are right there, they're right, right in front of right, our face. Right in front of our they're face. almost going back to back with us. Almost. You know what? In, in two that? more episodes, two or three more episodes, it will be back. It'll be back. sitting right in our lap. Yeah, that's right. So, even though it was just a couple years ago, we like to say we take the year that the pilot was released, yes. and we like to put our minds into that year and say, you know what? What happened that year? Let's put ourselves in that mind frame so we can properly. I was thirty-eight. Indicate. You were thirty-two. Wow! Very good. Wow, look at you. Finally doing some work. Highlights of the year, 2013. Lance Armstrong admitted to doping. You one-nutted son of a bitch. In all of his Tour de France wins during his cycling career in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. He loses Cheryl Crow. Yeah. He lures his Tour de France loses a nut. titles. Loses a nut. Loses a penis. Oh, oh well, no. A nut. Loses okay, a nut. Yeah. Loses sponsorships. Yeah. Um, he loses a little yellow bracelet. Surely you can find those anywhere, though, right? They're all over the place. Well, you said you said Lance Armstrong lives strong. Okay, no, those are rare. You're right. And lost that. It was custom made, and he lost everything just because he didn't want to. Like we try to be the best pilots we can be. Yeah. Not one time have we ever failed a drug test, and never once no. have we even thought about using performance enhancing pilot sauce. No. I didn't even know that was a thing, so well, I guarantee I've never thought about it. Performance enhancing pilot sauce? Yeah. You put it on your fries. I, I honestly wish you hadn't mentioned it because now I'm a little curious. I'm a little hungry, but, but I mean, we're only. It, well, is it going to help us that one flight, you know, or two flights a month? Sure, it's going to help us. But in the long run, we're gonna, we're not gonna, we wouldn't be able to look our listeners in the eye and be like, you know what? I'm clean. There's a certain amount of pride for sure that I mean, goes into you, it. We, we, you, you drink heavily. Right. I got a real problem. When we fly, you mm-hmm. drink heavily. Yeah. But that's different than news and steroids. Oh, for sure. Because if anything, it impedes my ability to fly right. rather than enhance it. Right, right. So I'm in the clear. Um, as far as Lance Armstrong's concerned, um, I really don't give a shit. Let him dope. Every, every guy out there is doing some version of that, don't you think? Well, have you ever seen the Tour de France? It lasts like 12 days. Mm-hmm. And they I watch just, every minute of every Tour They de cycle France. uphill. Yeah. Like, oh. it speeds of like 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I watch every minute of every one. I have, I have all the stats. So, yeah, absolutely I watch it. And it's an incredible feat of athleticism. Right. So, I mean, I guess when you, when you, when you look at it that way, do you blame him? I, I don't blame him. But, he, I mean, Cheryl Crow. If it makes you happy, right? If dope makes why the hell am I so sad? This show is built on the back of Blake's songs. You know what? There, there is there's a couple things in play here. If it makes you happy, and obviously doping made him happy because he, not only did he won Tour de France like 115 times, but also um, all the money he made and all the charitable work he did. But also Cheryl Crow would sing. Um, all I want to do is have some fun. You and that, know? Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, wh- where is the line? You know, Do you want to have fun? Or Somewh- do you want it's, what it's somewhere in the sand. It's somewhere in the sand. Draw the line. But I, genuinely, I do I not care. I draw the line. Dun, 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 this song dun, dun, is built I'm, on the back of Blake's attempt at songs. I'm not, I'm not as good as I used to, usually am. I'm it's a little off this week. It's all right. Maybe you need some performing enhancing uh, song sauce. <laughs> um, think about all the money Lance Armstrong has raised. For charities. That's true. I don't care what he did. Who cares? It's not like he did something evil. He's a liar, liar, pants on fire. Let him transfer blood from an oxygenated tank to him, drugs. Who cares? All the money he's raised for cancer research and other charities, I don't care. Go go, go crazy, Lance. I'm, I'm with you, buddy. Okay. Boston Marathon bombings. Whoa, two bummers in a row. Um, two bombs were exploded at the Boston Marathon on April 15th, killing three and injuring 264 Is people. Is that when they went around... We're chasing them down, and one was hiding in a, in a boat. And I a, cannot wait for this movie to come out. I heard there's a movie coming out. There has to be. Yeah, I know. Seriously, I heard today uh, on Comedy Bang Bang, one of the people they had is in the movie. It's coming out next year. Really? 
if you read through this, if you go to the Wikipedia page, it reads out of something like some bizarre, you know, like it's stranger. Truth is stranger than fiction. You got a guy. I think that at one point the two brothers are driving through the city, throwing bombs from the back of their vehicle at the uh, impending police officers. Sure. One of them is shot dead in a shootout, and yeah, they find another dude who is still alive. He's in jail, but they found him in a boat somewhere. Right, he was hiding under a tarp in a boat, and it, and they did. They found him from using ultra like like uh, ultraviolet. Like he, some sort of satellite uh, from the helicopter. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. they showed it red because of his body heat. Craziness. This uh, city of Boston was in lockdown. People were going door to door. Not it was madness. I have a buddy who lives in Boston, and he was at the marathon in that spot, like about an hour or two before it happened. Wow. I, I'm so grateful that he's fine. Definitely, um, that was really cool. But um, good terrible, on you, Tom terrible Brady. Tragedy. Yeah, good. thanks a lot, Tom. On April uh, 17th, you know, this is another. Exp- I'm, I can't do this. That's a, something negative. Um, okay, let's end it on this one. Former Disney child star Miley Cyrus releases her latest album and tries to remake her image with a series of attention-seeking stunts, all cul- culminating in her controversial MTV Video Music Awards twerking performance. I remember that. She ushered twerking into the cultural lexicon. Did she not? Yes, she did. She 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 was a hot mess. And I, I kind of think and hope maybe that she's not as – she's settled down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. She's on the the, the show. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the sing show. The, the voice, the sing songers. <laughs> yeah, the voice. Right. She's one of the judges this season. Yeah, Alicia Keys. I I've never seen her. But she's pretty. She's a beautiful girl. And there's someone with some genuine talent too. Sure. Like well, I think Miley Cyrus is very talented. I think she's just it's all covered up. I mean, if you if you stripped it down, you know, to yeah. just where she was nude. Mm-hmm. I think there'd be some strong. Powerful talent. There's a lot of. I love to strip her down nude to see oh. what kind of talents under those clothes. Um, people like like Lady Gaga. She can really sing. Oh yes. But there's a million people who can really sing. How do you, how do you catch how do you catch someone's attention? You you catch their attention by wearing a meat dress or a bubble costume. You know, sure, sure. You do you're... these outlandish things. But Alicia Keys is someone who is just genuinely like, let me get on this piano and really beat the hell out of it, and you're going to respect me, and I'm going to get some notoriety because of that. All right. So, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's what we do. This is really like, what I'm really trying to get to is, have you ever twerked? Oh, I, I twerk every night. Are you doing the, it right now? No, under the table? No. I can't do it when we're in the air. It'll, it'll throw off the plane's equilibrium? Yeah, exactly. Like, people are like, oh my god, there's turbulence, there's turbulence. Ah. Nope, nope, sorry everyone. I'm just... <laughs> Captain Rest is just twerking in the cockpit. Right. Cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, to Miley Cyrus, I think the controversy was she really did uh, quirk, or, uh, twerk, Robin Thicke's cockpit a little sure. bit, right? So, anywho, I was 32, you were 38. Why did we choose to watch Super Clyde? Uh, three criteria, the uh, cornerstone, cornerstone of uh, Couch Pilots. One, it had to have been a failed pilot that did not go to series. One and done. Yep. A lot of relationships like that we've had. You know? There's a lot of one and doneers. Yep. Some of them you went, you know what? I could have did two. Somewhere I'm just like, I did one, now I'm done. Right. One and done. <clears throat> uh, it had to be available. We had to be able to find it on the internet somewhere to watch it. Yeah. And then it had to be free because I'm not paying for this shit. I will not pay for it. There's only been maybe one or two shows that have really been worth like, me putting a dollar on the table. Global Frequency and The Alabama. Yeah, pretty close. Is that it? See? I, see, you don't rate things high, so I, I notice when, you, when right. you do. Right. You For a while there, you were just throwing sevens at For a while. <laughs> Throw the sevens all up in there. Where can you find Super Clyde? Well, you can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to Vimeo and search Super Clyde. Just so, so subscribe to the show. Subscribe to Couch Pilots. It's the easiest way right. to do it. I don't know why people haven't done that. You know, even if you're a famous movie producer yeah. who sees that we yes. tagged you in a tweet, yes, um, and you go to check out because you're like, I, I got to hear what they said about it, what they yeah. thought about it. Yeah, uh, just subscribe to the show. Give the other ones. You might, you know, what might happen? What someday you might get inspired by us because we throw out ideas all the time, every day, every day, every day. We every are, we, we are. Th- Idea and content churners. We're just mich- we're like Andy Warhol's fucking factory, just pumping shit out. We don't constantly. even we don't even ask for money. No, we don't need it. We're well to do. 
Right. If you want to bring us out for pitch meetings, just pay for our first uh, our first class flight and some filet uh, mignon. Filet mignon, uh, maybe three days at a, at a Hampton Inn. Sure. And um, a, a just Uber account. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get start an Uber account for us. It'd be, it would be cheaper than renting a car, right? Be damn straight, it will be. Yeah, you know, and and just some some uh, maybe some enhancement sauce. Definitely, and just you know, we'll we'll do some meetings with you, but you know, we're not asking for we're no. not we're not expecting a million dollars. It's more about the creative process. It's about the creative process, and if you're like, well, I'd, I'd love to be a part of that, and I'd love to watch the the shows that you're watching. Let me just go to Google and type in Super Glide. You, Absolutely, it is your freedom. Go to, for it, yeah. you idiot. Yeah. Don't do that. It's like walking into traffic blindfold. That's what you're doing. Because there's so much out there ready to attack you, but not us. No. We go out there. We find the link that is proper. We galvanize it in the classically blue color for your protection. We put it in our show notes. You click on it. You watch it. Footloose and fancy free. There's no chance of any kind of viruses attacking you. And you get to enjoy a quality product. Day one of Sky Cop School. Right. A- no. AKA pilot school. We're also sky cops. For, sure. I mean, we have jurisdiction over the air. Right. So let's go ahead and take the plane off. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. And into the air we go. What, what are you doing over there? You're on the computer, you're on your phone. What are you doing? Well, I'm working on a deal right now. I, I'm working on a deal right now. Can we talk about it? Sure, we can definitely talk about All right, it. All let's, right, let's, what's the deal? Um, as you know, our numbers each month are, are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Well, our plane only can house so many bodies, right? So we've yeah. got to get a bigger plane. Now, the plane that we have now is a used plane. From Judas Priest. From Judas Priest, mm-hmm. okay? Still has Eddie on the, on the, the wing. Yeah. I, you know what? It's kind of like... I don't want to take them off. No, you know, I kind of just leave them there. Yeah, we 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 had them paint like a little like pilot hat on him, and right? A scarf and goggles, but you can still tell because mm-hmm. he has he's holding the British flag. Yep. But um, uh, I've been looking on Craigslist, and I think I have found a even bigger plane. Really? Yeah, that uh, is not being used by the the owners anymore. Who are the owners? Is it someone of note like Judas? Oh, Priest? it's. I mean, it's. It blows Judas Priest out of the water. Why? Come on, that's. It was a pretty sweet deal that we got from Judas Priest. Oh, it was a, a great big, deal. It was a great deal. Huge name but, recognition. Someone bigger and better. Right. Um, there is some issues in regards to property. You know uh, who has what, who owns what. Okay. So they have to liquidate everything to to you know. Can Can you say who it is or not? Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. Yeah. Well, one of them's dead, right? I know that's what I'm saying. That's why this, they're trying to liquidate everything now. So the one guy who's not dead. So we got Vanilli. We're buying it from sure, Vanilli. Sure. And so I've been, you know, I've been on um, Facebook Messenger yeah. with him and talking to him about it, and you know, trying to work out a deal wow. for a bigger plane. Because I okay. mean, the downloads we're getting, we we're we're just cramming them in the back there. What we need to do is get a hold of Judas Priest again because they had contacted us about purchasing it back once they decide that Rob Halford being that's, gay was that's not a big That's why I'm on deal. the phone. Okay. On the computer. I, I don't no, know what I'm you're just, doing over there. It looks like you're distracted, but you, in no, fact, I you mean, really no, are knee-deep yeah. I mean, in couch pilot's work. Right. I'm always. If, if it's okay. not couch pilot's work, it's FCF work. I'm sorry. I just, it looks like you're it's distracted. Or it's looking at Hoppy Floppy on Instagram, okay? Because I, my phone now alerts me so I can see it faster. So I can you see. Just put it in your fucking pocket. I can see the nude one before... It gets taken off. Yeah. The most important thing. Because uh, I know it's hard enough to find a fucking nude picture of a woman on the internet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Summary of the pilot. Ugh. Centers on Clyde. A meek, unassuming fast food worker who decides to become a superhero. Have you ever wanted to be a superhero? Um, I have, like, violent fantasies. Is that the same thing? <laughs> I don't think so at all. Then no. Okay. All right. How about you? Um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily know if, if you would call it a a superhero. I mean, I I, I always wish that I, I could do something more than one just exist, like ten push ups. Oh, geez, if I could do ten push ups, that would be amazing. But good start. I, I, I'd love to be able to, you know, um, yeah, give 
give a dog a bone. Mm-hmm. Knick knack patty whack. You know, I want to be able to do that. And I right now in my life, I just can't. You know, I can't afford to do that. Is that is that nursery rhyme? Is it sexual in nature? Are they like let's physically? No, no, get- no, 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 no. It's like it's like a, like a dog. You see a, a dog. Uh, it's like uh, one of those rawhide bones, right? Exactly. You okay, know, I, was, I was genuinely no, asking because no. I don't know. You know, and knickknack paddywhack. I mean, come on, everybody yeah. knows knickknack paddywhack. Uh, my mind immediately goes I'm sorry. to the darkest, I'm sorry for that. dirtiest sexual places. No, it's my fault. I'm the one with. The well, disease. it is your fault, but I'm yeah. sorry for it. Thank you for thank you for that. Um, this next show, this next portion of the show is called interesting facts. Okay. And interesting facts. Let me just. Yeah, please take it. Because I mean. You've done a lot of work. I'm so tired. <laughs> I know. You look tired. Your eyes are red. I'm so tired. Your eyes are red. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I go to sleep. But, uh, you know, interesting facts. We're not just going to bring in you on here and talk about, you know, the, the pilot word for word, scene for scene. Right. There's more to it. We talk about what happened in that year. Yep. Uh, you take a lot of time looking into that. Uh, we talk about... Um, how old we were because that's really relevant. Really laying a lot of good solid groundwork. Thanks. Uh, we have the three criteria, obviously, but then we have interesting facts. Now, this is stuff that you dive a little bit deeper, yeah, and to, to find information that people are not going to know, you know, about. Like, oh, this super Clyde, this sounds like a cool show. Oh, guess what? Here's a bunch of facts about it. Boom. There was only one problem. What's that? Uh, we've done f- almost 50 episodes. Okay? I think this is 45. 45. Is it? Yeah, yeah, we're knocking on 50. And um, knock, knock, knocking on 50 episodes. Hi. 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 But uh, people just some don't, don't get it. They just don't understand. We don't, if you think it's interesting or not, it's not, don't quantify that with us. Don't tell us that. Yeah. Don't even look at your partner, your sexual partner. And say, "Ooh, that was interesting." You ever heard Don't of Jeff? Ever, yeah. If Jeff's laying in bed with his wife, right? Sure, love Jeff. You'll love this. After a hard day of making soap, right? I saw some of the soap he posted online. I oh, like did you? Have, I'd like to have some. Um, That's good. That's but good uh, you know, he and you know he's laying in the bed. He's wearing his tops, his pajama tops. Okay. Are <laughs> <laughs> they like baseball cards? Like he was covered in baseball cards. It's Donnerus and Fleer <laughs> sport. Uh, uh, what was the flicks? Uh, Who gives a shit? The ones where you moving back and forth. And then, I don't know. How I... <laughs> Static something. Yeah. Anyway, you know, Jeff has been a long time listener, first time caller, and he knows. Don't look at. Don't look his wife in the eyes and say, "Wow, that was interesting," because it's just going to piss her off. She's going to smack him. He's going to get up, kick the dog. The next thing you know, the world's taking a, 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 a way. You know, a it's a spiral. Shift. It's a, a yeah. spiral. Yeah. Well, he's, Jason is about ready to give you facts. Yeah. And you know what? Shut your pie hole. Listen to him. Enjoy him. Process him within your own brain. Do not say anything about him. Very good. I would even I would even go so far as to say, um, uh, Call of Duty still a very popular game. Yeah, I think you can hit a series of buttons to where you're laying on the ground, like getting in a prone position, and that's the position that I would suggest all of our frequent flyers get into when we approach the interesting facts section. Lay down on the ground. Get down. Get down. Everybody out. Everybody down. Nobody hurt. Right? What's it? Nobody move. Nobody move. Nobody get her hurt. Nobody move. Nobody get her hurt. It's almost like planking. You know. If I were oh, you, oh man, when if, you talk yeah. about planking, I love it. I would say lay down, close Unbutton your eyes. Unbutton your bra. That was the biggest titties that I yeah. ever saw. I said, yeah. "Damn, something gun in my hand." This what I thought was a bitch, but nothing but a man. Show. Gangster, gangster. It's not what they yell. It's not about a salary. It's all about reality. Great, whatever the fuck that was. Great. So, um, oh, you don't like the last swig of the beer, right? Because the backwash is yeah. that right? Okay, I see, I see a couple bottles with a little, little swill at the bottom. Anyway. Lay down, close your eyes, don't... Just, take it. Yeah, just, just just take it in. Just take it and don't say anything. This this one was tough. Um, I, f- I found a site that said basically five things to look for in a Super Clyde. So we're going to run through those. Okay. Some of the facts were hard to come by, honestly. So this is what I got. Rupert Grint's American accent. Rupert Grint being the star of Super Clyde. It may be strange for the diehard pottery, Potter, Potterites... Harry Potter fans. Potterodians. Thank you. Perfect. To accept, but Grint does American slacker surprisingly well. I thought so, too. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Fry's Alfred. Now, we all may remember Stephen Fry from the critically and audience-panned Crystal Cube. 
I knew he looked familiar. That's him. Um, he's back in another one of ours. A, 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 you know, a lot of people make multiple appearances. Sure. Josh Hopkins. Uh, there's, Natasha uh, uh, Najaro. Absolutely. Even uh, Nick Swartzen was in Next as well as right. Gay Robot, mm-hmm. right? Uh, just a couple examples. Stephen Fry is Alfred. No, his character's name isn't Alfred. It's Randolph. But the British comedy great gets a chance to play this version, play this show's version of the wise butler character that's been a part of the Batman lore for decades. His old partner, Hugh Laurie, came to an American network TV with much success for quite a long time, so it's a shame Fry didn't get a chance with this one. Exactly. Uh, Grintz Clyde is strictly a DC guy. Maybe it has something to do with uh, Marvel being owned by Disney these days, but Clyde's comic book fandom begins with Aquaman and ends with Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. So A to W. There's probably no character. Maybe there's a Z character, but not a popular one. Mm. I, I saw Thor on the wall. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Thor. The comic book love went deep. Just how committed was Garcia to his comic book style premise? Garcia being Greg Garcia, the creator and writer of Super Clyde. Check out these original comic book pages commissioned for the show. You can catch glimpses of a, glimpses of them, but not this close. So we can we'll have some. Uh, what's that? What are you looking at me for? Can I ask a question? Does that that doesn't it, it won't? I'm not giving any opinion. Can I ask a question? Sure. Was this a real comic book? Uh, this was not, no. Oh. No, but there were scenes, and we'll talk about that. With okay, kind of oh, okay, 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 I'm with you now. I, I, for a minute there, I thought you were telling me that this was a comic book. Absolutely not. The, uh, the number 100,000, Clyde's monthly stipend from his inheritance is $100,000. Yep. Does that number sound familiar? It's the amount Earl won in the lottery in creator Greg Garcia's other comedy series, My Name is Earl. It's because $100,000 is a nice, even number... Oh, is it because it's a nice even number or because Garcia was attempting some kind of quasi-mystical Lost-like connection between shows? And Lost is capitalized for the show Lost. Sure. Uh, we'll never get to find out. Hmm. That's it. Those are the five things you should look for those, when watching. Those are five things. Here is a, um, a portion of the show we don't always get to, but one that definitely yes, applies this I time. Love this. You love this. This is great. Um, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Every show that we do... And, you know, I, I will put our failures out there. Every show that we do, I look at the writers, the directors, everyone involved, and I say, do these motherfuckers have a Twitter a Twitter account? And if those MFers do, I will send them some stuff and say, hey, you know what? This is who we are. This is what we Pleasure do. Pleasure to meet you. You're very polite. You're like, right. Pleasure to meet you. This is what we do. This is who we are. Who we are. Couch pilots. That's right. And then we high five in the air. But uh, sometimes people don't get back to us, and that's fine. Yeah, they're busy. So some are. Some I can clearly see are not busy. Right. So why not get back to me? I'm very polite about it. I just ask people out there, hey, anything fun or interesting you want to contribute to the show, we're going we're gonna to shine a little bit of light on it right now. Right. And if you want to, great. And, and people from the past, like Micah Wright from uh, Constant Pain. Amazing. amazing. Josh Hopkins, Diedrich Bader, um, John Rogers, probably one of the most notably people, John Rogers, really gave us some great information about the global frequency. Right. I mean, like behind the scenes stuff that nobody would nobody know. Nobody would know. Um, uh, Mason Reese. Mason, we had contact with Mason Reese. Uh, we've had contact with people like Mike Lee and Black and, and Tom Lennon. Um, these, are, these are awesome friends of the show. We sure. really appreciate their feedback. Um, so in traditional Couch Pilots fashion, like I said, we reached out to those involved with making of the pilot, and a few reached back. One of the stars of the show, Tyler Labine, who turned, who's the older brother, um, he favorited but not offic- did not officially respond to us, but the writer and creator of Super Clyde, Greg Garcia himself, responded in a big way. Uh, you may not know Greg Garcia, but you surely know his work. He has been a writer and or producer of some of the most popular television shows in the past 20 years, including Family Guy. Yes, dear. Raising hope. My name is Earl, and of course, family matters. Wow! So uh, you you've probably heard of all of those. Oh, all, every one of those. Yeah, those are big time television shows. Uh, Greg asked us which version of the show we'd be discussing um, today, and we wrote back the 2013 version. And I had discovered that a second pilot with new actors was shot just two years later in 2015. Amazing! And that that's really bizarre. That doesn't happen. Um, but I was unsure as to where a classically blue link would be that would contain that episode, but no fear, because Greg is sending us a DVD copy of the 2015 version, yet another first in Couch Pilots history. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. You have truly 
earned your wings. Amazing. No, seriously, that is super cool. It really is cool. Like, this is a guy, you know, like Victoria Jackson. Hey, you were in this pilot of Walter. Why don't mm-hmm. you tell us some things? Doesn't have the fucking time. She had cancer or something. I don't know. Um, You know, a lot of these people, they just, whatever, you know? Yeah. Oh. Uh, We're it, not making any money. We're not asking them to give us anything. We're not asking right. them for money. And this guy who has been involved with umpteen yeah. famous television shows <clears throat> said, guys, I appreciate you taking the time talking about this. Um, I want to give you the other version, too. I'm going to send it to you in a DVD, probably Blu-ray. Yeah, probably Blu-ray. And I am... We, we're going to do it, we're definitely. We're going to do the second version. It'll be cool to really look at both versions and compare and contrast. Uh, it's going to be a little bit before maybe we wrap around and do it, depending on when we get it. But um, very interesting, very cool of Greg Garcia to do this. And, and honestly, with this, it kind of cements... I, and I, love, I loved his work with The Grateful Dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, the best. The best. He's a legend. God. I mean, and he took the time. He's going to take the time to mail it. I hope he does. They even named that ice cream after him. Oh, right? yeah. The um, but like I was saying, this cements a pattern, as I can see. You're talking about Mike Wright, the guy who created the cartoon Constant Pain. You're talking about John Rogers, who took an existing property and then wrote a show about it. And then here you're talking about Greg Garcia, a writer and producer, created this show specifically. These people really cared. These are passion sure, projects. Sure, sure. Things that they're they not created. just actors that were hired to do this. Right. Like, hey, I've 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 I put this seed in the ground. Mm-hmm. I, I watered this seed, as, yep. and, and did it grow? As big as I wanted it to? No, no, it didn't. But you know what? I still love it just as much as the ones that did. Just as much as Family Guy. So, like I said, this is really cementing a pattern of, of people who really have their hearts and souls into these projects, reaching back and saying, hey, you know what? Thank you for taking the time Definitely. Thank to, you. to watch it. And here's some information, or here's a DVD. So, again, thank you, Mr. Garcia. Very cool. I look forward to doing it. I, I, I don't care when it comes. When it comes, we we, we got to do it. We'll do it right away as soon yes, as it comes yes. in. Um, so we'll we'll germinate on that, and keeping with the plant theme, and we will listen to a quick commercial from one of my favorite shows on the FCF network, the song Inside and Out. Ever wonder what inspired a songwriter to pen your favorite song? How did they come up with that cool chord progression, or even how they got into playing music in the first place? Join the podcasting god. Amen. Blake Clayton as he talks to the prolific songwriters in Roots Music to talk about the song Inside and Out. Join us every other Tuesday at fcfnetwork.com for the song Inside and Out. Also available on iTunes. Drink away the night. This song is built, but this show is built on the back of his songs. It's too dark to see. Now that is the Soggy Bottom Boys, if I'm no, correct, right? It's Drunken Cuddles. Oh, that's what I meant. Oh, I, that's one of my seriously one of my all time favorite Roots music band names. Oh yeah, <laughs> the Drunken Cuddles. That's awesome, <laughs> and I love their t shirt. Has a, it's like a it's like a, a a glass bottle with a with a ki- with a cat squi- you know like like trapped in it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Super Clyde, let's break down the pilot. Break it down, fellas. Break it down. Okay, it starts with uh, Clyde. The titular Clyde running through a neighborhood, being chased by some ladies, and it says, hold on. Let me tell you how I got here. Yeah. And so he kind of recaps his childhood. He's kind of a nerdy kid getting picked on. His sister's a big fat lady getting picked on. Right. He, um, he's he got a, like a germ phobia. He wouldn't get on the bus. Yeah. And it's funny because he looks at the bus and you see all these kind of little comic, uh, book, sports. comic book stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And something else you notice right off the bat is he is a nail chewer. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh my! How can you not notice it by by not like recognizing it throughout? Oh, the show? he's a huge nail chewer the whole time. Okay, I, I, whenever I, he's nervous. Yeah. Well, going back and watching or watching the 2015 version, whenever that comes in, if it comes in, which I, I think it will, uh, we can. I will probably rewatch 2013 at that time again sure. to compare and contrast, and I will I will make sure to notice all the nail biting. Uh, I think we should watch them together. Can we? Can we? I, I mean, sorry. Can we? Can we hold hands? Is that, uh, is we, that can, cool? we can sit on the couch together naked and just oh, with a blanket yeah. over us. Oh yeah. Oh boy. So his brother's kind of a kind of a jockey, kind of a yeah, dumbass. Duke. He's, his name is Duke. Yeah. And um, I recognize him from two things. Okay. Uh, wasn't he the dog character on what's that? What, what's that? The Hobbit guy. He had the dog, the imaginary dog. I don't know. I he's been, he's been in some stuff for sure. He's made his rounds in. in he's in a new Hulu uh, Hulu Hulu 
Hulu show where he sees dead people. Okay, I have not seen that either. I, but I, I, I honestly, I think he was in a movie like Dale and Tucker versus Evil. I think he was in yeah. that, and I think he was in a show called some some show where they're like dealing with Satan, and but Satan's kind of a goofy. Guy. He's got, it's a comedy. Anyway, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's a very recognizable. His name is Tyler Labine. He's the guy who favorited our tweets. Nice, nice way to way to, way to go out on a limb, buddy. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, he's he, the kid loves comics. Clyde loves comic books. And he reveals that he's lost his parents as a child. So he relates to a lot of these comic sure, book characters. Sure. Do, you, do you have some information on Tyler Levine? Uh, no, I was just going in here. Uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Right. Uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Monster University. The Boss. I still don't see the Super Troopers 2 he's going to be in, which they're filming right now. Yeah. Okay. Are you excited about that? No. Oh, okay. They're not going to recapture the magic from that first one, and it's taken forever. It's it's too late. They didn't capitalize when they should have. Anyway, um, then he says, you know what? It's me and my two older siblings. We're living with our Uncle Bill. Crazy he, Uncle Bill. Weird guy. He invented Silly Putty. And he, was a, he was a chemist. Yeah, and he kind of stumbled upon it. Right. And it made him, obviously, a millionaire. cha like, His house is incredible. Cha-ching. Cha-ching, indeed. He's a rich, weird old guy. And um, they're kind of talking about him as, as a child. They, they're sitting around this big table, and then he keels over dead. Right in a soup. Right in a soup. A little bubble comes up. Boop. And, they, and they, he has his <laughs> – this is it's a man, right? His lawyer was a man. Yeah, it was. He's a like, weird – Yeah, he was cool. I liked him. Like, for, like a genderless being is what this person right. was. And uh, the lawyer says, you know what? Um, you guys can live in this house. That's totally fine. And you can grow up here. You can live here. But all the money – is going to uh, feline uh, or cats with that need corrective vision. Right. He holds up a pamphlet of like a cat with a pair of glasses on. Love it. And so Duke and Faith are just like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> you know, mostly Duke. He's like, what the hell? Yeah. And Clyde's just in the middle of like, like, uh, Duke gets up and punches the genderless lawyer. Right. And then, um, and then so they live there and they go through school and, and, uh, uh, they say, you know, Duke is in charge. He's 18 years old. He's technically adult. That you guys can live here, you will be in charge. But right. since they don't have any money coming in, the law- the uh, butler that they had there for years, he he leaves because right. he can no longer be. And a Duke starts selling all the furniture in the house to, to yep. get money. Um, uh, meanwhile, so he doesn't get a job. Duke doesn't get a job. Clyde, however, gets a job at like the Popeyes Chicken. Yeah, I think it was Ploppy's Burgers. Yeah, it, it reminded me of. Pl- uh, I thought Popeyes too. Seriously, yeah. when I saw, it. but it's, I think it's it Ploppy's Ploppy's Burgers, and so then. He's he 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 doesn't mind working there. He works every day, you know, every every day. He works there every day because he's in love with the girl that works there, which they really didn't capitalize too much on in no. the first episode. Uh, but that's fine. Her name it, was Jolene. Yeah, Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Yeah, I'm begging for you, please take my order. Have you <laughs> have you heard the slow down version of that song by Dolly by, Mo- I, by Molly Cyrus? No, by oh. Dolly Parton. Like they they slow it down. It's like haunting. You should, really? you should hear that. It's really cool. Huh. Good song. Um, the siblings all live in the house. The fat sister. And I see, I see the sister. I was like, this is, a, this is a thin lady in a fat suit, right? right this is, sure. she, she looks weird. And the brother's just kind of a loser, just hanging around doing nothing, right? We're, wearing his old uh, high Le- school. Letterman jacket yeah. like 15 years <laughs> later. Uh, the genderless being, lawyer. Has not aged at all in the 15 years. Calls him on the phone, says, hey, i got to see you guys. Yeah, meet up. He says, that charity I was telling you about, it was totally fake. It was a big lie. Super Me and your lie. uncle lied about it. There's no cats. That, you know how long it took us to get that, the glasses on that cat to, oh, that to, make, that, to make that brochure? <laughs> that was funny. Uh, basically, you know, your uncle uh, has put the money in the trust, and he wanted you guys to you know take 15 years, because that's about the time it's lapsed in there. Um, to 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 make your own way in life. Yeah, to be- make your own silly putty. Yeah, become who you be. Turn into a person. Uh, find your own path without the aid of some old man giving you you know piles of cash. And so he said, you know what? From here on out, you get a hundred thousand dollars a piece every month. Can you imagine that? I, my, all my problems would be solved in probably one month. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, ah, you know what? Just give it to me every other month. It's fine. The brother earlier, being the loser that he was, was watching a video online of some uh, very attractive young lady hula hooping a bunch, mm-hmm. and he had a two ton mega boner. And now he's got all this money. He he hired that woman to come stand in his living room and hula hoop for him for a week straight, no touching, no touching. 
The sister. He's like, he's like I know you've said it. Don't say it anymore. You're ruining it. Yeah. <laughs> the sister uh, goes out and gets liposuction. Mm-hmm. And uh, she comes back all bandaged up, head to toe. I think they sucked the fat out. They trimmed off all the excess skin. Exactly. And um, Clyde just puts his money into the, the bank. Yeah, Clyde's kind of like at a loss. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, he's kind of like, you know what? I didn't. He, I think he's been living this 15 years in, in just. Just wandering, you know, and for the most part, like, you know, he's working every day, yeah, but he hasn't just found himself yet. Yeah, that's right. They At, th- at that point, they hire um, their old butler, Stephen Fry, back, and I, fr- I think his name is Randolph or Rudolph. They hire him back, and then he immediately says, you know, this is this house is disgusting, i got to clean it up, and then he goes and sees Clyde. He says, Clyde, I, something's wrong with you. Do you want to talk to Dr. Giggles? That's so crazy. This is the... It's pretty, pretty this bizarre. Is bizarre. Um, this is this. You know what? I was like, "Oh my god!" At the, uh, so I, Crystal I really think, Cube stuff right here. <laughs> uh, Rupert Grint, probably twenty five, twenty six years old. So at the time, he was probably ten. He's probably a little boy. And Doctor Giggles was a little painted on thing on, on on Stephen Fry's hand, where you, you know where you make a fist and you kind of move yeah. your thumb up and down to talk. Sure. He probably used that to talk with him or communicate him as a child, and now he's pulling the same thing. While uh, Clyde is a grown adult, he's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. So he starts talking to him as a butler, saying, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing with my life. We got all this money. We live in this beautiful house. I don't know what, I don't yeah. know what the next you, step is you're, for you're me. Like, my uncle was just, just a crazy guy. You yeah. know, he would take pictures of, of himself smiling, and he lost his wallet like three times a week. And, you yep. know, my, my grandpa didn't have it together. My uncle, I mean. Yep. You know, he would dance by himself in this big, huge house, and he would drive this beat-up car. Very bizarre. And then the, the butler says, you know what? This is actually what was happening. Your uncle one day lost his wallet, and some man contacted him and said, hey, here's your wallet. And, yeah. had, and all the money was in there. Everything was there. And he's like, wow, this, is, this was a good person. Sure. Here's a reward. The guy says, no, I don't want a reward. So the uncle goes out, and he buys a crap car, because otherwise he's got these big, beautiful vehicles. So right. he has this little crappy car. That so he can it's incognito. Kind of, right, his little, his little uh, camouflage vehicle so he can blend in with the rest of society. And he pulls up to this guy's house, and he watches him, because he's looking for a way to pay him back. And he notices one day that his mower breaks down, so he buys him a brand-new, beautiful mower. And then he takes a picture of himself, kind of a, a selfie, sure, with with the results in the background, right? And when you're when you're first seeing the uncle flipping through the pictures of just him, big, he's smile. got a whole. Uh, but you don't you don't you don't it, really yeah. see what what that's all about. Yeah, he's, so. the uncle's got a big book of all these selfies, and they thought this dude is crazy. Why does he have this? And this is why. And then he says, you know what? This made me feel so good. I'm going to go out and just start throwing wallets around. And the people who come back to me and give me back my wallet, I know that they're a good person. No, and I will good do, for them. Absolutely. And so he made – the rest of his life he spent doing that, helping out people good who were deeds. good. Yeah. And inspired by his comics, uh, Clyde sets out to do the same. He's like, I want to be – you know, my uncle was like a superhero. Yeah, and I've got all this money. What am I going to do with it? Let me get out there and try to help people. I think that's a great thing. And so uh, Clyde just like puts wallets everywhere, like full of yeah. cash. Just Takes the same vehicle. Yeah, just throwing them out the window. Mm-hmm. No one returns the wallet. No one returns them. He's getting kind of bummed. Sister comes back, and now all of her bandages come off. She's a good-looking girl. Yeah, she's good-looking. She's hot. Would you classify her as a buxom blonde? No. Oh, no. No. I mean, she was, wow. she was pretty, but... She wasn't buxom. You just love – and buxom really centering in on the size of breasts. Yeah, but it, it, it also has attitude too. Oh, okay. Well, you, it, Just like the, uh, the, uh, the yeah. chemistry makeup of Silly Putty, surely there's a, a chemistry makeup of what is considered a buxom sure, blonde. Sure, sure. And so she's going through all her, her whole yearbook and finding all the mm-hmm. guys that, that call their names and stuff, and she's getting them back. She's going on dating websites and Facebook and whatever and finding them and – Coaxed him over, and yep. she's going to get back at him. Uh, Clyde then receives a call about a wallet, and then he he follows the woman home to her house. She like gives the wallet to a coworker of hers and says, "Hey, the guy's coming to pick this up. Please give it to him." The guy immediately pockets oh, yeah. it. Clyde sees the whole thing. He follows the woman on a bus, which is filled with germs. Right, and he and he's chewing his fingers. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I did. I got. I got to watch it again. They they drive over to her house, and she's been riding the bus, and she missed tucking the kids in. And she mentions that briefly, probably out of earshot of Clyde, but then he goes home and kind of creeps out through her window and it's sees larger. exactly that. And so he's like, wow, this this woman has got to ride the bus every day. It's kind of a bummer for her. She's a good person. She's got to take one bus to another bus to another bus to another yep. bus. By the time she gets home, her kids are already asleep. Yep. 
Meanwhile, you got some ladies doing a late night jog, maybe even a neighborhood watch scenario. They see Clyde peeking hey, in the window. You pervert! Get back! And this is the beginning of the show. He's running, right. and now you got these three hefty broads running after him. He makes a quick phone call to the butler. Says, "Hey, I'm in some real trouble. Come pick me up." And boom, he's right there. Yeah, in in a, in a scooter with a sidecar. Awesome. He comes up, dressed fully in his butler garb. He jumps in, and then they go home. And him and uh, Stephen Fry have a little bit of a conversation. Right? Yeah. Okay. And um, Stephen Fry's like, hey, you really shouldn't be doing this. Right. Your uncle kind of had an idea what he was doing. He, he'd done it a lot. He really knew what was going on. You, you, sh- you, shouldn't, um, you shouldn't do this. He, he, in fact, your uncle helped me out at one point in my life. Yeah, I was, I was somebody that called and, mm-hmm. and said I found a wallet. And I had nothing. And he gave me a job. He gave me a livelihood. Right. And I appreciate yeah. it so much. And Clyde's like, you know, the, this money is my superpower. Yeah. All the literally his the wall of his bedroom is just plastered with all these comic books, all these things that he invested his his life and he loves it. He's got a real passion for it, and now he can be one of those characters on the wall. Um, so they they look at each other and they kind of view the situation, and they say, you know what? Let's buy this woman a car. We'll give her. How, a- you can't just go up to her and say, here here's a car. You can't do it anonymously. No. Oh. But there is an anonymous. And so they go through this really elaborate way of going through all this stuff. Yep. And they use a comic book form, you know, the different... Um, the panels, the sliding panels. panels of the comics. Yeah. Right, to to explain what they're going to do so yep. this lady doesn't find out. Yep, and they give her, like, insurance and gas for, like, ten years. Just yeah. take care of everything. Here's a gas card for ten years. Yeah, incredible. What are you going to do if you lose that gas card? Yep. Uh, at this point, he's in the car, in that same car as his uncle was in. He takes a picture of himself with the car in the background, the good deed, and and the show's over. He yeah. he, uh, you see a silhouette of him at his house, his big mansion that gets him to the same, you know, record that his uncle did. He gets a call and he says, "Oh, you found my wallet? Great!" Meaning, guess what? Just like so many pilots before this that we've seen, they're saying, "Hey, on to the next adventure." Exactly. On to the next adventure, and maybe we should get on to some turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Why didn't the show work? That's the question we ask ourselves when we hit the turbulence section every time. Captain Restasher, why didn't Super Clyde work? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that... What was it? Was it a comedy? Yeah, was I, it, I, think it was think a, it was a comedy? I think it was a light-hearted comedy that really... Your family could watch. You could watch this as a family. Like a My Name is Earl kind of thing. It, it, you know it, what? Very close to that. It was like the superhero instead of the redneck version, or trailer trash version of My Name is Earl. Yeah. I didn't like the actor that played Clyde. Okay. Um, I think maybe if it was somebody else. Um, it was an interesting way of going about it, but I, I, you know, I, I worry that what's going to happen. You know, like, uh, you know, that other show, you know, he won all that money and he's trying to r- right wrongs, right? Jason Lee as Earl, and my name is Earl, gets uh, one of those scratcher tickets, wins $100,000, and says, you know what? I'm a bad guy. Right. I'm going to go out and start righting all my wrongs. Sure. Um, so this is like the opposite version of that. Yeah. In a way, you know what I mean? Like a different version. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know why it didn't work. I, I, I mean, I didn't. I was watching it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wasn't like this, this sucks, but I just, I wasn't getting emotionally invested. Okay, I sure. Didn't, there wasn't that thing that 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 caught me, that hooked me, and that, that took me Gra- grabbed you in the cheek and ripped you to this, yeah, yeah. Apollo style. Um, well, here here is what I found on what they said why the show didn't work over at CBS. Is here's why CBS ultimately rejected the high concept comedy Super Clyde, according to EW's or Entertainment Weekly's own James Hibbard. Um, it was deemed off-brand for the network, and the Nets, uh, the network's other comedies came in strong. Plus, successful comedy blocks are about creating flow, and there was also nothing compatible that CBS had to pair with it. It is, it is, it is like I said, it's a, it's a high concept It's show. a comedy soup mm-hmm. on, a, on a network, let's say a Thursday night. Yeah. You know I mean, there, you, you have, everything has to complement it. Every, if there's, it. Each show has to complement from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock. 
those four shows have to complement each other in sure. some you know not not necessarily directly but in you know they have to be part of the soup and the reason that is is because you don't want people changing the channel right if you give them something that is in the same vein or similar to they'll be like oh i like that i'll probably like this so they're going to keep watching you're going to get a steady flow of maybe an hour or two hours of one person not changing the channel. And yeah, that, that honestly makes sense to me. Whether or not it's true, it's hard to say whether that's really the reason. I think a lot of times you have preloaded things you can put out to the public of why something didn't work. But th- this makes sense. Sure. This is a high concept show. Where do you put something like this? And being family friendly, you know, it, it, CBS is a, a family friendly station for the most part. That, that's, uh, where would you like, how would you improve it though? I would have somebody else play Clyde. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what didn't you like about Rupert Grint? I just, I always thought it was Harry Potter guy. Yeah, okay. You know? I don't, I don't like red hair. Okay. <laughs> Mute Jacob? Can't stand him. Oh, uh, poor yeah. Jacob. Uh, no, I just, I, I, it seemed to, I didn't take a lot of notes, which means it, it was quick. It was a quick show. It was quick. It was a 20, 20, 20 But I mean, it was, show. the flow was quick. Mm-hmm. Right? It, the, the more notes I take, the slower it is. Okay. So. And how about if it survived? Where would you like to see it go? Uh, just all the different kinds of people he, he sure. runs into. Yeah. You know, uh, his brother, what kind of trouble does his brother get himself yeah. into? Uh, his sister, you know, when she, you know, gets, finally gets pregnant or, you know, or contracts the HIV virus. Finally, like it's destined to happen. Well, it's destined to happen. <laughs> You know, um, when she's so fat, no one wanted to fuck her, and now all of a sudden right. everyone wants to, so she's determined to get AIDS. You know, eventually the, the, the butler's <laughs> going to get older and he's going to get sick, and how, how is Clyde going to deal with that, just like Batman has to deal with uh, Alfred? Sure, okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. T- to me, this is almost a complete carbon copy of My Name is Earl. It really is. This is a man. This is someone with a money. Family version. Who's going out to do things? And you got you got the big fat guy on My Name Is Earl, who's the brother. You got a, a dumb brother yeah. here, right? Yeah. And then you got the hot uh, Mexican lady who's cleaning the hotel right. on My, My Name Is Earl. And usually I don't know much about these sitcoms, but My Name Is Earl is actually a show that I watched for a couple sure. of years. I liked that My Name Is Earl because mm-hmm. I like Jason Lee so much. And you got the hot Mexican bride, and here you got the hot sister who's a blonde. So you got. Kind of the same setup of characters in a similar scenario with a little bit of a tweak where it's a superhero aspect and you got a young kid out there doing it with who comes from money and virtually an endless supply of money. Right. Um, if, I, if it survived, I, same as you. You know, week after week, you're, you're getting these phone calls. You're getting put in weird positions. You're doing interesting things. The, it leaves it pretty well open. You know, with uh, we talked last week about the Monsters reboot, uh, Mockingbird Lane. Where would that go? You'd be stymied pretty quick, I think. Sure. But in this, it is endless. Sure. It could be almost I mean, anything. They, you can have funny episodes, or you can have episodes that are culturally relevant, or mm-hmm. the, something to do with, a, you know, uh, you're helping out somebody in a situation like that's going on right now in everyday life. Tra- transgender. Exactly. You, know, you can you know. help them complete their transition. Oh, that's expensive. Yeah. It's very expensive. Yeah. Um, you know... Uh, a, a family whose child is shot by police. Yeah, you know, how do you help the Clone, police? Uh, cloning a child is not how do you help the police. Is not cheap. Or how do you? Yeah, how do you help the police in that scenario? How, how, I mean, how do you fight legislation against body cams? I think is what that episode was sure, be, right. Sure. So I, honestly, that those are some good ways it could go. Good ways that can prove. Let's start our final descent. Maybe we'll get the opportunity to help. You know, write some. Episodes. Fan fiction of uh, Super Climb? You think he'll get a hold of this? I do think that. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. Safety first. IMDb score. Did you check this out? No, I did not check the IMDb because that's not fair. Let me guess. Put it out. 6.2. 7.9. 7.9. From 312 separate ratings. Wow. So it's been seen a little bit. Not much. It's, it's been, been seen. <laughs> just, just will unrelenting in his ability to stretch where that can go. <laughs> uh, viewer reviews. Nicely done. 10 out of 10 scars from TJ Peterson from Bellingham. Awesome, wholesome show. No nudity or swearing. That's Good true. moral to the story. No wonder CBS didn't pick it up. <laughs> that um, was true, though. There was no real nudity or really raunchy. Very family friendly. Um, love this show. Nine out of ten scars by Chendrix23 from the US of A. Really love this show. I hope CBS will give it a shot. I'm so tired of all the violence and negativity on TV. 
This was entertaining and fun without being sappy. That's true. Nice comedy. Six out of ten scars from Thomas. Film reviews at web.de. No, 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 no. Don't give him extra help. I'm sorry. He's from Berlin, Germany. Okay, go ahead. Because um, we're trying to help with the Germans. Good morning. Good morning to all. Super Clyde is a 25-minute short film from two years ago. The title characters play blah, 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 blah. Thomas, you really do not deserve any push there. Uh, cute and potential. I think that's... Uh, it's Nuru, French for potential. At least from Argentina. Wow. Nero 92. 8 out of 10 scars. It is a rather naive show, and some things might be a bit forced, but it certainly does have potential. My new favorite show. 10 out of 10 scars from Whitney the Shell. How could it be your new favorite show? It was on once. This is the um, the cultural blockage that we have here. A little bit of a uh, uh, language barrier, if you will, from Argentina. 10 out of 10 scars. I love this show. I want to watch more. It would definitely be my new favorite. It's a really great for any, any age, too. I want to see more already. Finally, a show that promotes something good. And finally, amazing. 10 out of 10 scars from Magnus Samuelson from Australia. I found this show by accident while looking for TV shows with Tyler Labine in it. it sounded really interesting. Took forever to track down a copy to watch. The show is fantastic. Uh, has a brilliant, heartwarming storyline. Always had a smile while watching it. Even nearly shed a tear at the end. Uh, I don't know about a lot you. of positive praise. Well, yes, yeah, so a lot of wholesomeness. Wholesomeness. That's, I think that's a good way to describe this. This this pilot is, is wholesome. There's wholesomeness. That is every rating from IMDb. That is the actual score from IMDb. I'm not blowing smoke up of Greg Garcia's ass just because he contacted us. Sure. These are the genuine ratings. People seem to really like this show. Too bad CBS or some other network or right. channel couldn't find a spot for it. And again, two years later, they created another pilot, which again, went unsold or didn't go anywhere, which is a real it's, shame. Yeah, I mean, we haven't ran into that, that there was a pilot and then the same... I mean, I'm sure the script was a little different, but... The same concept was done again right. just two years later. Yeah, that's very interesting. Was the, there was when the Oz, Wizard of Oz one, maybe there was something. Yeah, I think something was being developed around the same time from never, Tim Burton, yeah. but it never took off, if I remember correctly. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what the folks are saying about it. Let's see what we have to say. Let's take it in for a landing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. Yeah? You're looking at me. Is everything all right? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't hear it. Okay. I didn't know if we had lost, if we stopped recording or something. No. Okay. I, I, I'm having issues with my ears. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It's the pressure in the cabin. We boarded the plane. And corn. And corn, because they're they're the starting, band is so it's such a powerful band that and they're starting to plow fields and it's just kicking big. up shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, we boarded the plane. We put you in the mindset of the year that this came out, two thousand thirteen. We gave you the interesting facts. We reached out to the creator of the show. He he reached back to us. Thank you very much too. That's, Thank that's you awesome. very much. We, have to do it. we broke it down. We broke down the show. We told you what the critics said. Now it's our turn. Using the classic scale. From the television show from the mid '90s, Wings. Love, think, love Wings. Love the show Wings. There's uh, seven main characters, and that is our rating system. The seven characters of Wings. One being the worst. It's Roy Biggins, Ugh. the big fat arrow mass piece of shit. And then you got number seven, the very best, the wild and freewheeling, uh, Bob Dylan style, Brian Hackett himself. The best score you can get. Captain Philip, rest assured. I turn to you. How do you rate Super Clyde? Um. I didn't think about the wholesomeness until I started reading the reviews. I, I did, that it, I didn't dawn on me mm. how you know there's a lot of sex, drugs, and rock and roll on TV. I hate that rock and roll. Hate it. Hate it. Rock and roll. Fuck Elvis. Right. Right in the ear. Let's go back to polka music. Um, I didn't take that in, into consideration. It's obviously uh, swayed your train of thought and perhaps even your score. Yeah. I'm going to give it a a four and a half. Four and a half. There you go. This is a special episode for me personally. This is the first show that I watched with my daughter, and she enjoyed it. Now, did you know that it was going to be appropriate for her to watch? Or um, you had a good idea during my research, saying people saying family friendly, I thought it would be right. acceptable, and uh, so I did. I sat her down, and we watched it, and she's only ten years old, so um, it was definitely appropriate for her. 
and I told her our scoring system, and she said, I give it a high six. Nice. A high six. Very reasonable. She didn't just go, oh, seven, it's perfect. Sure. High six. She's like, you know, she, she knows that there's a... She knows that there's a wall. I mean, a ceiling. Right. You know, I and mean, she's not going to put you right up there against the ceiling because that's. You know, she's going to say, you know what, high six. I got high that. six. I like that. And I will have to say that I agree with her. Okay. I don't go halves. I don't go six I and a I'm, half. I, I'm I, an I, asshole. You're definitely an asshole, and that's something we can talk about off mic. But um, I will give this a six. I will give this a Helen Chapel. This was a good show. The pacing was good. It was. It definitely. If you've seen. Uh, Some of Greg Garcia's work before, even very specifically, the one I was most familiar with, uh, being My Name is Earl, this has a similar feel. The way it was written, uh, produced, it it, it feels very similar. And I liked My Name is Earl. I didn't mind Rupert Grant as the main character. I thought he did a fine job. Um, Everything where Stephen Fry was very good as the butler. This was a funny show. And it had a good moral, and you're right. It is um, it is wholesome, and that counts. That really does sure. count for something. If you can pull sure. off something entertaining to an adult that is not, here's a bunch of titties, here's, <laughs> here's all the guns, right. you know, that counts. I give this a solid six. All right. This is a show that I would recommend. This is a show that I wish would have made it, okay. had, had continued. Very good. Very good. And with that, we close the book on Super Clyde. And, you know, I will say we will mention it again. Usually we don't. but no, with, we know we're going to. With the impending 2015 version, we will mention it again. Join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of the horribly titled <laughs> Life Twirls On. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Three grown sisters who share the same last name of Brown are suddenly forced to move in together after the most successful sister has a nervous breakdown from ending a one-day marriage. You can find the entire episode. Been there, done that. <laughs> you can find it by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. Or go to YouTube and search Life Twirls On. Twirls? Pilot. Twirls. Spell that for me. I will not. It's, I'm sorry. It's, it's T-W-I-R-L-S. T-W-I-R-L-S. It's, that's a really poor name. We're starting it in a negative space with them. I guess Go, I didn't spell it right. You got to email. Everyone's got to have one. Type in couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. Tell us how you like the show. More importantly, tell us how you hate the show. Or if you know about a pilot out there that we haven't seen, send that to us. Let us know about it. We'll Do you dig think people up. hate the show? I think, I think some – they used to say that some people – would listen to uh, Howard Stern because they loved him, and some people just wanted to listen to see what he'd say next. That's true. I think that's where we are. I think you and I are in Howard Stern twirls, territory. Twirls. Twirls. What was you I saying? You were saying twirls. No. I would never say that. Um, we are on Instagram. We are on Twitter and Facebook. Follow us on those. You'll know what's coming down the pike. Wh- what are you doing there? It's 2015. Yeah. I couldn't find a 14. Okay. Thank you for that. Sorry. Thank you for that. <laughs> I have very high expectations. I know you do. And, and and we communicate usually very well. Well, you and I can sit down and look at my spreadsheet here in a moment. No, 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 no. It's fine. I... You'll find out everything that's coming down the pike if you follow us on the social media outlets. You'll get to see our interaction not only with our frequent flyers, but also the creators, directors, writers, uh, directors, whatever. The people who made the show who are in the show. Right. Have, it's a lot of fun. It is fun. We but, have a good time. I mean, if you... Just if you open up your mind, the rest will follow. The rest will follow. Just, just have fun. Don't be so color blind. Blind. Bind? I love to buy me some women. <laughs> color Amanda binds. Um, FCFnetwork.com. dot com. Amazing. That's our that's our family. That's our their family network. Our all the sister shows. They're yeah, all, we're we're right around the corner. One year of one, existence. One year of FCF. And you know what? The world is a little brighter place. There's, you're darn right it is. Anything else you'd like to say to all of our frequent flyers before we, we go? No, just just interact with us on social medias. Um, like, Don't just like share links and such. and Just tell people about what we're doing here. We're, we're trying to do something that's fun and different. You know, there's thousands of podcasts in the world today. Um, 90% of them are just meaningless jabber. Who, wa- who wants jabber? The jabber watts. 
Jabberwockies? Jabberwock- the Jabberwockies do want Jabber. I'll give you that. Um, I did, never saw the Jabberwockies, but we stayed at the Luxor, which is where they were. The Jabberwockies being a dance group that was on MTV at some point? They were on um, So You Think You Can Dance, I think, is where they started. Oh, who gives a shit? Oh, my God. This pile oh of eight rough. What? No, what? you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> this pilot may have been rough. Oof. But it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. I'm an asshole. I love you. I love you. And I you. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire you're my best crew, friend. we'd like to thank you for joining us. I don't know if you're today. happy about that or proud, but you are my best friend. In the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.